From the WRAL News Studios in Raleigh, North Carolina, this is the WRAL Daily Download, an in-depth conversation on a story worth talking about. Welcome to the WRL Daily Download. I'm Jack Hagel. $1.2 billion missing and lots of angry investors. Today we're talking with state government reporter Travis Fain about a four-year back and forth between state regulators and a Durham investment firm and about the retirees caught in the middle. Travis recently wrote about the battle and he's here to tell us all about it. Travis, welcome. Yeah, thanks for having me. Travis, your story over the weekend about global growth is just the latest chapter in this saga. Uh, For the uninitiated, can you just set the scene for us? Yeah, it's a guy named Greg Lindberg who uh, had been living in Durham uh, several years ago. I don't know exactly where he is now, but I mean, he built an empire, a business empire, hundreds of companies uh, based on court documents, appears to be a billionaire. And one of the things that he invested in was insurance companies. He bought some insurance companies. He moved them to North Carolina. He got a favorable deal with how he could invest the money. I mean, it gets a little complicated, but there are limits to how much of an insurance company's money you can invest in other businesses you own. Because insurance companies, are they get premiums every month. They're very liquid. They're a good source of cash flow. Uh, so you're limited in how you can invest that because the money needs to be there when policyholders need it, right? When they die or in the case of annuities, which is what uh, particularly one of these insurance companies sold a lot of, when the, when the date hits, the money needs to be there for the person who invested in that annuity. All right. He came on my radar because he started giving millions of dollars to North Carolina politicians. He was North Carolina's largest political donor at one point, uh, like five million bucks. So we're talking real money. And we started hearing that, hey, the FBI might be investigating this guy. And it was true. Uh, And they seem to have been investigating him on two fronts. One, he was eventually indicted accused of trying to bribe state insurance commissioner Mike Causey, whose department regulates those insurance companies I mentioned. And then, two, there seemed to be an investigation that may still be ongoing into Mr. Lindbergh's business practices, how he moved money around in these companies. We've seen a subpoena from several years ago that indicates that investigation exists. We don't know what's happening or what has happened. He, he has been convicted of bribing the commissioner. He was in federal prison for about 20 months down in Alabama. But the Fourth Circuit Court of Appeals has now reversed that finding. They said that the judge gave some bad instructions to the jury. So, I mean, you can kind of look at it as a technicality, but a really important technicality. He's going to be retried in March of 2023. And meanwhile, the state state insurance commissioner has taken over these insurance companies running day-to-day operations because they feared there was not enough money to pay the policyholders. So, you, uh, you know, in addition to the uh, the political donation portion of this, um, tell me about how the state is uh, is involved at this point in the story, particularly with the company. Yeah, so they hired a consulting firm called Noble Consulting. It's out of Indiana. And they basically run these insurance companies and a judge oversees the whole thing. There's a court case that, that was filed. I It started uh, in 2019, I believe, or late 2018. And so this whole thing is, is partially running through a lawsuit and partially running by uh, consultants and attorneys brought in by the state of North Carolina Insurance Department. Help me understand how this company works. Global growth itself is not global growth. It's, it's many things, right? Explain that. So Global Growth is like a a brand name, as they put it. I kind of think of it as a holding company uh, that Greg Lindberg is the sole shareholder in. And underneath it, there are hundreds, maybe, of companies, including these insurance companies. And the way the insurance people invested in the insurance companies was they bought policies. They bought a life insurance policy. They bought annuities that would mature. Uh, I think a lot of them are going to mature next year to to a five-year annuity where you invest a little bit. You get paid a little bit better interest than you're going to get from a a, a, a normal savings account. And then when the the surrender date hits, you get the money back if it's there. Uh, What what Mr. Lindbergh did, according to the Securities and Exchange Commission, according to uh, a Wake County Superior Court judge, according to state regulators, according to quite a few people, uh, was take the policy, uh, the money that you pay every month or the money you pay for the annuity and invest it in a whole bunch of other companies. And in some cases, used it to finance his uh, his own lifestyle, according to the Securities and Exchange Commission. Uh, so as part of your story, you uh, you managed to chase down a few investors. Um Tell us about them, and how did you find them? So two of the couples 
that I spoke to are in their 80s, and they bought these annuities thinking this will be a good way to make a little bit of money to fund our retirement, except now because the companies are in rehabilitation, that's the state-run process we talked about, like they can't get their money back. It's, it's essentially frozen. And I mean, it's a little more complicated than that, but I think you can think of it as frozen. Uh, you, they, they can't get what they thought they could get. And so they're just sitting waiting for this long, drawn out process that has taken four years at this point. And, you know, they're in their 80s. So a lot of these people think, I'm, I'm going to die before I see this money. I am not going to have the retirement and the twilight years that I thought I had invested in because annuities are supposed to be a really safe investment. That's kind of one of the selling points. Uh, But because of all this rigmarole and the fact that we don't fully have a picture of where all this money went, uh, they're kind of out of luck. And the way I found them was they, they were so desperate that they wrote letters to the judge who's overseeing the case, Judge Shirley here in Wake County. And the court said, look, we can't, you know, you can't be writing the judge directly, but we're going to forward these letters on to attorneys for both sides, for the state and for Global Growth, which is Greg Lindbergh's uh, holding company. And Global Growth is now on a bit of a PR offensive. They took out a full-page ad in the Wall Street Journal, a full-page ad in the News and Observer, pushing Mike Causey and the insurance department to move faster with this rehabilitation. They say, look, we got some financial moves we can make if you'll just sign off on them, because they don't control the insurance companies day-to-day. That's the state uh, rehabilitators. If you'll sign off on these moves, we can get these people paid. Why aren't you working with us? Full page ad. And and to back up that full page ad, they sent some letters because they had included examples of investors who stood to lose. The thing is, when I looked at those letters, those folks blame Greg Lindbergh. Uh, and of course, that was not mentioned in the ad. We'll be right back after the break. When we come back, we'll talk about how global growth has changed and what's next for investors. Travis, you write that many of these investors wonder if they'll die before they see a return or even get their money back. What are the chances of that? It's hard to say. I, I, I wouldn't. I don't think they're great, though. I mean, again, a lot of these people have, have become pretty desperate about this. I, my understanding is that some have already died uh, before the money came back. And, you know, the, 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 the state folks will tell you, well, I mean, look, there's only one party in all of this who has been indicted on a bribery charge, who faces a Securities and Exchange Commission complaint that accuses him of bilking money from these companies. Again, we believe there to be a secondary FBI investigation. There's deep, deep roots on this. And that, that one party in, is Greg Lindbergh. Um, so what the state will tell you is, look, we're trying to get people paid, but all the money or most of the money is on their side of the wall. You know, we we cannot make Greg Lindbergh send the money that he has invested in all these other little businesses that he owns, squirreled away in all these other little companies. We cannot force him to send that money back to the insurance companies. And that's what the rehabilitation process is about. That's what a court order uh, orders him to do. Essentially, it's obviously more complicated than that because Lord knows everything always is. But that's the crux is they've got the money and the money needs to be moved back to the insurance companies. Uh, you, you spoke with the new CEO, Justin Holbrook, uh, the new CEO of Global Growth. Did he tell you at all what the company's done to improve? He says they've done a lot of things, um, and some of that is kind of normal course of business when the owner is indicted uh, by the federal government. Some trust have been set up. Uh, things have been, kind of been partitioned off. Holbrook says that uh, Mr. Lindbergh does not run things day to day. He says the buck stops with him. Uh, but he does acknowledge, you know, Greg Lindbergh remains the sole shareholder uh, of this company. Uh, he chose Mr. Holbrook as CEO. Uh, so it's it's difficult to say what what exactly Mr. Lindbergh's involvement is. That Holbrook says he has a package of investments, financial moves that he wants the state to sign off on uh, so that they can start paying more policyholders back. But there's just this total lack of trust. I mean, look, the last time Mike Causey, the insurance commissioner, and Greg Lindbergh spoke, Mike Causey was wearing a wire for the FBI because he he, he felt like he had been, uh, that Mr. Lindbergh was attempting to bribe him. And that all resulted in a federal trial that's going to go back before a federal judge in March. So what is next for the company and for Lindbergh? And how is the state involved uh, going forward? So uh, Judge Shirley here in Wake County ordered uh, Mr. Lindbergh to do a number of things and Global Growth to do a number of things as part of the rehabilitation case. 
they're trying to enforce an agreement that was struck in 2019 uh, that the state and the judge say Mr. Lindbergh never adhered to. And it's all about, again, sucking the money back up from all these individual companies where Mr. Lindbergh farmed the insurance company premiums out to, get them back into the insurance companies, get people paid. And we just don't know how long that's going to take. It just, it, again, it's dragged on for about four years now, and I, I don't see an end in sight, but things could change quickly. Well, I'm sure you'll keep us updated. Thanks, Travis. Yeah, thanks for having me. If you want to check out Travis Fain's article, go to nccapital.com. And thank you for listening to the WRAL Daily Download and for making us part of your morning routine. Another great way to get WRAL news is the Morning Briefing Newsletter. It's a daily email that's waiting for you in your inbox every morning with triangle news, events, and headlines to get you ready for the day. Sign up at wral.com newsletter.